Welcome to the Harper Classroom series of instructional videos. This video is on Moving Average Forecasting, Part 1. The introductory example number 1 is part of the Time Series Terms and Techniques table where we have a stationary time series or random component and the technique of preference is moving average. I use the five-step problem-solving process to show how to apply the technique of moving average. Start with introductory example number one, moving average, where we have a weekly time series. Where this time series is aggregated over a week. So this 24 could be 24 homes that were sold during that week. It could be could represent $24,000 of profit that was made that week or 240 calls that came into a switchboard. Well, the first step is plot and determine stationarity. So when we look at the time series over the plot, when we talk about stationarity, we talk about some stationary mean. And when we look at the overall nature of the time series, we see that it's level around that stationary mean. So therefore, the time series is, is referred to as stationary. The next is choose your components. And remember components means the cause of variability. We see there, ha there is variability because from time period 1 to time period 2, it goes from 24 to 26. That difference is 2. That's variability. So when we look at the overall variability in this time series, there is no pattern. It's patternless. It's unexplained. So an unexplained patternless variability is referred to as a random component. Next is select your technique. And there's where the table comes in. When we have a stationary time series and a random component, the technique of preference is moving average. Next is estimate your parameters. Well, the parameter for moving average is a window. We will not estimate windows in this series of lectures. I will give you the window. For example, if the window is 3, that means we take the last three values and use those to determine our forecast for the future. If our window is given to be 5, then we take the last five values of the forecast to forecast the future. But we always take the last values, the ones closest to the future. Next, we obtain our forecasts. If our window is 3, then we average the last three values. And if we average the last three values, it's going to be 24. So that's our forecast for the future. But if a window is 5, then we average the last five values. If we average the last five values of the time series, our forecast then is 25. Whether our forecast is 24 or 25 depends on the window, which is the parameter. So forecasts depend not only on the technique you use, but the parameters that you estimate or the parameters that you select. So this ends the video on Moving Average Forecasting Part 1. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.